did when I originally drew the one. So, in, in one sense, trauma is an ideal wound that touched, you get triggered. That's what triggering is, right? So, all the wound gets activated with that. And the other thing that happens to wounds is that this, well, when scar tissue is certain characteristics, it's thick, it has no nerve endings, so there's no feeling in it. So, people trauma that disconnect from their feelings. Um, scar tissue is rigid, it's not flexible. So we lose kind of response flexibility. So when something happens, we tend to react in typical, stereotypical, predictable, dysfunctional ways because of the rigidity. And scar tissue doesn't do really like happy flesh. So people are traumatized tend to be stuck in emotional states that characterized their development when they were traumatized. So when somebody says to you, don't be such a baby, uh, it doesn't sound very pleasant. But there's some truth to it. It means that you're probably reacting according to the lines of some wound that you sustained as an infant. And now you're, you're reacting as if that wound was happening all over again. This is what one of my friends in the trauma world, Peter Levine, calls the tyranny of the past. So something happens in the present, and we react as if we're back there in the past when this first happened. And we're not in the present moment. I was, I was trying to figure out how many people, um, as a percentage of the population, have a have trauma. But then I, I you know, I read this like sixty percent of adults um, say that they've had a sort of traumatic early upbringing or a traumatic event from their childhood. But then I thought maybe everybody has trauma. It depends on um, how you understand trauma. So if you understand trauma, there's only the really terrible things that happen to people, which do happen to people. You know, in the book I talked about. A British friend of mine that we're now living in Canada. Um, they are a yoga teacher and a meditation teacher and a psychologist. And, uh, and they grew up in some orphanage in Britain where they were racially taunted every every morning. You know, and the words that are in the book by her permission, which I'm not going to say here publicly. And that gave her a sense of decision. The sense of self that I'm just not good enough, that I don't know what I'm saying. There's obvious traumas. Or the obvious trauma of being sexually abused. So, a man who was sexually abused in the previous day had triple the rate of heart attacks as adults. You know, and all kinds of physiological reasons where that should be the case. So, there's those self evident, what are big T traumas, or what we call big T trauma, cap, T with a capital T, trauma with a capital T. There's a certain percentage of the population, much larger than we think, subject to that, if you include. Um, all the known factors such as physical, sexual, or emotional abuse, spanking, by the way, has not been shown to be as traumatic as the harsher point of physical abuse. Spanking is still recommended by several experts. We should remain, remain a man for the moment. Uh, the death of a parent, the violence in a family, the violence of parent and violence against each other, um, a parent being jailed, a parent being mentally ill. Did I say a parent being addicted? A rapper's divorce. These are the identified big trauma, big T traumas. Not, not to mention poverty, not to mention extreme inequality, um, war, and so on. But then, if you remember that trauma is not what happens to you, but what happens inside you, it's a wound. People can be wounded not just by bad things happening to them, but small children can be wounded in loving families. Where they don't get their needs met. I mean, that's obvious in a physical sense. If a child doesn't get proper nutrition, their, their body will suffer, their mind will suffer. There are also creatures with emotional needs as important as their physical needs. So when the child's emotional needs are not met, that child is wounded. And that's what we call small T trauma. 